Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. I'll share this just because I think a lot of people living in the US don't understand how terrible Mexico has become in the last few decades. Throw away because I still have family living there and I'm paranoid. So I grew up in Mexico City and, in the 80s, it was actually pretty nice. My neighborhood wasn't rich, but it wasn't poor and it was near a university. When cartels started taking over the neighborhood, I didn't really take it seriously at first, thinking it was just the type of violence you have to expect if you live in a city. Then, I got kidnapped when I was 16. They thought my father was way richer than he was, mistaking him for another guy he worked with. I was walking home from school, usually was with friends, but that day, I left later than they did, when four men grabbed me while I was waiting for a light to change and threw me into the back on a van that was waiting on that corner. I was so shocked that I didn't really fight back until the door was closing, but the van was already accelerating. Three held me down and the fourth sat on my chest and held a machete to my throat and told me to be quiet and still and I'd be home soon. I was terrified and just closed my eyes and lay still. I could barely breathe. I spent the next three weeks in a warehouse somewhere outside town. At first, it wasn't too bad. No one spoke to me, I was just left with my hands cuffed in a small room by myself. They gave me minimal food and water, and two bathroom breaks per day, but it wasn't torture. Then, after about a week when my family hadn't paid them, they started the torture. It was very cold and methodical, which made it even more horrific. It seemed like they were just operating according to protocol and had done this so many times that it wasn't even interesting to them anymore. Each day, they would torture me for about 40 minutes, documenting the process with Polaroids which I found out later they were sending to my family. Over two weeks, they burned me with a butane lighter, cut my back and thighs, stabbed wire through my hands and feet, burned me with battery acid, and cut off the tip of two of my fingers. The things that were the worst, not knowing what new torture would happen the next day and having a whole day with nothing to do but think about it, imagining what my family was going through, and not knowing how long this would go on. Eventually the military rescued me and my parents and I left to live with my mother's father in the US. I still have a lot of scars, especially on my back and won't ever wear shorts, no matter how hot it is. One finger looks pretty normal now except for a fucked up nail, but the other had to be completely amputated from infection. If people ask, I just say it was an accident when I was a kid. I can't talk about it. I haven't even been able to talk about it with my parents and they can't seem to talk about it with me. I know they are completely eaten up with guilt that it took so long to get me. When I am home now, we can't talk to each other about anything more than surface conversation. It's like we've all been holding our breath painfully and can't exhale. I was smoking pot with my friends when I was 15. I didn't realize that it was laced with K, and so smoked quite a lot. I K hold. I ended up being dragged to my friend's bed, just off the living room, there was no door between the room and the living room, just a curtain. I was essentially paralyzed, but fully conscious. The friend, Anthony, came into the room. He started kissing me, and talking about how I wouldn't get away this time. He spent hours snatching me, and slicing my legs open slowly with a razor blade. I was in agony, but couldn't move. I could only beg him to stop. Eventually I figured out that seemed to make him happier, which made him more violent, so I turned off. I just looked at the ceiling, and listened to the sounds around me. My friends watching films, drinking, and smoking in the living room. Music. Cars going past. Anything. I think I was crying. He called me horrible things. He kept forcing smoke into my lungs so I wouldn't sober up, and I think he gave me something else. After about 4 hours he dragged me into the shower, literally, still unable to move. He threw me on the floor and turned the cold water on, and walked out. He left me there for hours, until I could move again. In the morning, when I could finally walk, I went into the living room. He and the others were watching a film, and just ignored me. I was covered in blood. I wanted to leave, but had no clothes. I went back into the room, to look for my clothes, but saw blood everywhere. Anthony followed me into the room, and asked if I was on the pill. I told him I wasn't, as he knew I had been a virgin. He said perhaps you should take the morning after pill, and gave me one. I just looked at him, grabbed the bloody sheet wrapped it around me and walked out of that house. What was it like? It left me permanently scarred, in more ways than one. It was torture. Why was I tortured? Because he thought I would be easy to snatch, but it turned out that I was a better drinker than he realized, so he drugged and tortured me for revenge, I guess? I don't know. 
Funnily, I never asked him. Afterwards, I stumbled to a friend's house who lived nearish. The next day I went to family planning, to get a morning after pill, I wasn't taking anything he gave me. Sadly, it didn't work, and so I had a termination. I was too messed up to report him, I was a 15 year old homeless f up, and I didn't trust the police or justice system to help me. I spent the next few years trying to warn people about him, and got called a slut for my troubles. Eventually people realized what he was, and I got apologies and crap, but the damage was done. I still struggle with it, and I struggle with the knowledge I will never be the person I was going to be, that he and what he did helped shape me. The visual reminder, in the way of scar tissue on my legs. Anger has nothing on what I feel. To be honest, I am beyond anger at this point. I was tortured when I was 11 by the man that was molesting me. He found out that I had told my parents someone was hurting me, so he hit me over the head with a wrench and then snatched me with a knife. I still remember the way it looked. I felt like I was watching the scene from above my own body, like it wasn't even happening to me. I just saw the knife go in, I didn't feel it. He left me there to bleed out, I guess. Luckily I managed to crawl back to my house where my parents took me to the ER. I had to have stitches but I barely even remember that part. The experience wasn't like you'd expect I guess. I barely even experienced much pain. It was like my body was protecting me from feeling it. It was almost like it wasn't even happening to me, but someone else. I don't want to give too much info because I'm a bit afraid of being identified or something, but my parents didn't know who he was. I met him online which lead to meeting in real life. I obviously didn't know he was a grown man. Then, he told me if I stopped meeting with him he'd hurt my family and my cat so I kept going, as stupid as that sounds. As for physical damage done. I have a lot of scar tissue down there and so I believe I have a bit less sensation than I used to. I can still climax though, and children. So no lasting damage that deeply affects me. Back when Iran's green movement was still going strong, I got caught in one of the protests. They had us transferred to an unknown place for three days. Our hands were tied with plastic handcuffs and they had our eyes covered at all this time. They did not let us sleep for three days and forced us to answer to their questions and stuff. One of the things they did was make us stand in the middle of a room and throw medicine balls, those huge heavy balls not sure about the name in English, from random directions, remember we couldn't see anywhere. They'd also hit us randomly with nightsticks in random places. I actually heard from one of the guys later that he got hit in the head with one of those sticks and passed out. They put us under so much pressure that most of the people actually broke down under it. I began hallucinating on the third night myself. After three days they finally sent us to a real prison, Evan. When we entered there, they finally let us take off our eye covers and the sun hits us right in the eye. I had a bright spot in front of my eye for two weeks afterwards. Long story short they finally let me go after about 1.5 weeks. It was one of the worst experiences of my life and I really got lucky that I got away alive and well. I was 14 and there was this messed up 20 something guy in our rural neighborhood. I used to have to walk about a mile from the bus stop to get home. I never even noticed I was being followed. He dragged me into the woods and threw me on the ground. I screamed until he took out a box cutter and threatened to kill me, then I started to cry and beg. He just started to carefully take off my clothes. He started cutting the insides of my thighs going higher and higher. If I screamed he just cut deeper. Then something made a noise and he looked up, giving me a chance to run. I have never run so fast in my life. I made it home, naked and bleeding. Most of the cuts were pretty superficial. A few left permanent scars, but I still can't wear bathing suits without anyone really noticing them. I never told anyone, and the man ended up going to jail for some reason or another. I'm truly sorry to everyone else in this feed. It's terrifying how many monsters are out there. I was held down and hand a hot iron held to the top of my left hand for several minutes. I received third degree burns so severe that once I had the skin debrided you could see the bones when my dressings were off. There was a chance I would have a permanent loss of function in my hand, however it is healed up so well that you would never even notice the scars unless I pointed them out to you. Incident occurred circa six years ago. When I first arrived in Rio Negro, Argentina, I started collaborating in a sort of community garden in a squandered place. I didn't know nothing about anything but it sounded like a fun thing to do while I got a job. One day, this people show up, and start berating us and breaking things. That day, while I was going back home I get flanked by three dudes in some sort of uniform and stopped by a third, who instruct me to follow them or else. 
We get on an official looking car, and I end up in this precinct far away from where I was picked up, near a slum, on a decaying room, damn scared and surrounded by pretty messed up looking people. I eventually get called for questioning, sat on a plastic chair and told I needed to sign some BS in front of me, which from what I could tell talked about me selling dope, I wasn't, so I could get back home. I stated that wasn't going to happen, that I wanted a lawyer, and that I wasn't going to even talk to anybody else until I actually got one. This is not actually legal procedure here, but I thought it was at the moment. Then they zip tied me and sat me in a high chair, kinda like a baby chair but taller, I'm tall and couldn't put my feet on the floor. The man who was talking to me left the room, and then a fat man with what seemed like a really weird assortment of BS in hand, a garden hose a bucket and a stick water heater, showed up, got next to me, slapped me and told me that I should have done as I was told. He slapped me, asked me again to sign the thing, and as I refused, grabbed my hair with a hand and beat me with the other twice. Asked again, I said no. He left the room, came back with a bucket of damn cold water, doused me with it and shoved the hose in my face, after which he asked me if I liked this, called me gay and retarded. I still wouldn't sign the damn papers. Had this vivid memory of someone telling me to ask for a doctor so I did. He looked at me like I was joking or something and whipped my side and part of my back senseless with the hose, after which I was thrown in a nearby toilet room, door locked. Some random dude was receiving the same treatment for some reason. I cried. I hadn't cried since my grandpa passed away, and I bawled. This went on and on. They tossed me in a sort of toilet where there was only a pipe dripping on top of the room. At some point, the door opens, and I get pulled by my hair to the same chair, my ties cut and now there's another, bald, small dude with a beard in there with the first one. Tells me he's the prosecutor, and that if I sign the papers I can get back home and this will all be forgotten since I don't what BS was going on somewhere and I was going to be okay. I didn't really get much of what he said, had only been in the country for less than half a year, but I keep telling them I won't, so he leaves. And then I get whipped again, and again, and fat dude tells me that if he shot me now, pulls a small gun and shoves it on my face, no one would ever know, and that it's all my fault, and none of this is necessary. I actually cry on the papers when he hit my head on the desk, so he beats me again, ties me to the chair and brings new ones. More whipping, more bawling. I actually only wanted to die at that point so this could finally end. I couldn't think of anything else than how nice it would be for it all to just end there. They drag me to this piss covered place with some other wailing people, one of them curled up in the floor, and I just sit against a wall and keep crying my heart out. I start shivering, and note my sides hurt. And it's so cold and that all of me hurts and that I can't move without hurting and can stop shivering. Eventually they dragged me back to the same place, same story, but then this dude smacks me and it was just not painful. I don't know, it just wasn't. I mean, it was clearly bad, but not painful, so I smirk a bit, before resuming the bowling. They bring a plastic bag and threaten me with it, I later on learned it means this can get even worse. Same story as before, no signing of BS, and somehow they stopped threatening me with the bag. Finally, I get tossed in this other place with different people, some clearly recently arrived, and some indefinite time later I get called again, looking bad, and still crying, but they tell me in the most caring tone in the world that it was all okay, and that I could leave after I get all my stuff back. Get checked by a doctor, who didn't even show up, and signed some random papers, one of which oddly enough asked if I ever felt improperly taken care of. Fat dude escorted me to basically the middle of nowhere, and told me I'd be much better off forgetting all of this, unless I wanted to get back there. I was left crying my heart out mid slum with no shirt, no shoes and no money and somehow dragged myself back home. Fortunately, since it took many days for the bruises to show up, and six weeks for them to go away, I gathered with my friends and eventually managed to push a case, and there's been very few nightmares since. I was serving in Vietnam in 1969 when the war was getting very hot. I have been a member of the Communist Party of the USA my whole life, and my higher-ups knew this. So I would always get treated terribly and my fellow troops would spit on me and burn me with cigarettes during the night because it was my fault they had to fight. They hated me because I was a communist. I was not open about it, it just got leaked from my government record of me, they recorded all members of the communist parties. After three months of this I got tired of it. I decided that I would defect to North Vietnam to help them fight, since I strongly disliked the American government by this point. I painted a small banner that said Tron Me Sinh Vui Long hide me please, and found a village in the north. 
I stayed there with some friendly locals and the next day I woke up to an AK-47 pointed at my face. They hit me with it, knocking me unconscious. I remember being handcuffed and dragged to a prison. They thought I was an American who got lost, but I kept saying Tron me sin vui long and after three days of being held in a jail cell they let me speak to them. I told them what I knew about the USA's military and they said I could help them. I was treated very well. I would go on scouting missions in the south since those I encountered thought I was an American soldier and thought nothing of it. One day when I was on a scout mission a squad from my old platoon recognized me and escorted me to a military prison outside of Saigon. They asked me what I told the NVA, since they assumed I was kidnapped. I kept repeating that I told them nothing. They did not believe me, so they began to torture me. Every day for an hour I was tortured. It was always the same five things but in different orders so I couldn't prepare for it. I would be waterboarded, they would beat me, take my shirt off and whip me for 10 minutes, cut my leg slowly with hunting knives, and would burn me with an iron rod. I was given barely enough food and water to survive, and could only sleep for 2 hours a day. It was just enough so that I wouldn't die, but they could still keep torturing me for information. They would wake me up by whipping me. After a month of this they stopped and I was brought to a more humane, but still terrible prison. I was held there for 6 years until the war was over, being beaten and cut with knives on a regular basis. When the NVA liberated the South they let me go. I worked there as a translator for 3 years before moving to Russia where I currently live. I have severe post-traumatic stress disorder, had bad anxiety and trouble sleeping because of this. I never talk about it because I now have a wife and two beautiful children. They don't know what happened to me. I am in regular contact with my parents. Life is good, but I still have terrible flashbacks to those days.